Greetings everyone. Today I wanted to share how I use polymer clay um, to make trigger guard and ejection port fillers to lessen the need for adjustment, uh, retention adjustment after the kydex uh, comes out of the press. Um, typically if you don't and you heat your kydex up really hot it'll fill up your trigger area so deep that you'll have to come back with a heat gun and relieve a lot of uh, a lot of retention. So it started out <clears throat> I had to try um, polymer clay because we've done some crafting before and I thought wow this might work. So this was a test case here. This is um, just a plug that was never finished um, just to see how well it would work. This is hardened after it was baked. Now I would take a rotary tool, come in here and route out whatever I would want to create the, uh, the proper space for the kydex. And there's multiple plugs. I was playing with different ideas. This is behind the trigger and it would snap in like this and then I came up with other plans after that. Let's just see if I can get, uh, this is another concept where it would be a two-part. This one comes in from the other side <clears throat> and it would fill the entire trigger guard. This one's a little bit tight. Needs to be adjusted. Anyway, that's the concept that started this all. And it's worked out really well. I have, uh, let's see if we can get this out of here. No, I'll do that later. Oh, oh, and then here's another one. This here was a uh, typical problem with revolvers coming out of the press. Yeah, they get entrapped totally. So here I made this to fill in the cylinder. And it's worked well. Uh, it's still not perfect, but it did work. So, moving on. Today I'm working on uh, my Ruger LC9 getting it ready for production and this is the first side that's been completed already and it snaps in and basically I just have to do some trim up on it and I'm hoping that that will work and what I'm going to do now is uh, kind of try to do the other side on video so you see what the process is um, Basically, you just take some polymer clay and you have to massage it for a while to get it into a working state. I take a chunk of it and plaster it in wherever it's going to go and make sure that I have enough of it in there. And then once you've done that, you take cornstarch, this regular cornstarch, and you brush that on the area that you want your clay to go into. And what this does is it helps release the clay so you can pop it out and it will maintain its shape. And you just put your clay in there, get it formed in the as close as you can get. And then I'm using craft stick. Put the craft stick in and then press it into the clay. And then, you know, try to gauge. You might have to do it two or three times until you get it figured out right of exactly what you want. And I come back with uh, a knife and trim off the excess. Uh, it might be a little bit too much on this. The polymer doesn't work very well in a real thin sheet, like trying to go back here and fill this in. It's hard to control before you put it in the oven. Um, it's hard to control the flexibility of it because it gets pretty flexible as it warms up. 
and this is the the most difficult part is getting it out of wherever you're pressing it into you have to make sure that you use enough um, cornstarch and now what we're oh, I should have oh, I needed this in here so now the fun comes we have to try to get that popped out but I'm gonna have to take the other side out first and this one is a snap fit okay now we got that one out now we can take and push this from this side carefully and you can see it's coming out stuck to the gun yet I'm trying to get a good view here there now we got it out but it's not right yet we need to have a lot more um, cornstarch in here so what now what I'm going to do is cornstarch all of these areas in here <clears throat> You have to excuse me a little bit. I've been battling a sinus infection for the last uh, eight days, and I'm still having problems with my voice. So, get your cornstarch all around. Okay, and then you put her back in. Try to get it to where it's tight in there, but not so tight that it won't basically fall out. And you can sand and trim afterwards grind it whatever you want you can cut it with a knife you can grind it <clears throat> I have to be careful on this one because it has to mate up with uh, with this piece here which is a little bit I'll just grind that off in the back so let's see if we can pop this one out make sure that the Oops, I'm off video. I'm having a hard time working and making sure the camera angles right. <clears throat> Make sure that uh, you've got enough retention in the trigger area there. Okay, let's try to pop this out now. Now this time it's coming out real easy. See how that's just falling out? That's what you want. You want it to fall out and then just lay this as carefully as you can on a business card, on a piece of cardstock like this. And this one's getting a little bent. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And now that one's ready to go in the oven. And you put this in your toaster oven. Whoops, off camera. Sorry about that. Put this in your toaster oven at 275 degrees for 30 minutes per quarter inch of thickness and uh, that is the temperature to use for primal uh, sculpey primal that's the uh, the polymer I like best I've tried Fimo um, and a couple other brands and this one here is working out the best for me um, and here's an example of an ejection port on a Glock 19. I'm using uh, craft sticks to build up the slide but there are times when I don't use the craft sticks that it comes in very handy to have that ejection port and it's removable I just put a little bit of double back tape on it to hold it in the spot if uh, I'm not using the craft sticks and these are the trigger fillers trigger guard fillers uh, for Glock 19 and I've also tried experimenting with um, the Tacket picture hanging whatever they call that uh, putty it's a, a putty that you can use for sticking things on the wall etc and that's been working out well I have a piece of polymer that's between the two pieces it's glued to one of the pieces 
I think, or maybe it's just floating in there. And then I'm using the tack to build up the back for the, the angle. And that's worked out really well. It handles the heat of the Kydex without a problem, and uh, I've been having good luck with that. Here's a, a G26, same concept. This one here, I think, is using the tack completely. Um, <coughs> both sides of this. And you see, I don't leave very much of an indentation here for retention. And that's because uh, I get tired of <coughs> going back with the heat gun and relieving all these. And I found that it doesn't take much to give you a really nice lock everything is locked in so you don't need a whole deep well in the trigger for trigger retention in fact you don't want that so this here is uh, you know very nice and all that is is just that tiny little thumb press right there and it's got her in so that about covers it, I think. Um, do this that other piece. Oh, here it is. So when you're done, you should have something similar to this. That uh, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be a snap fit. Uh, it's nice if it is. <laughs> Lessons how you're going to hold it in there. Um, but hopefully that'll help. Some of you guys out that are trying to deal with the problems I've encountered. Um, and I'll continue on making these little uh, how-to advice videos, whatever you want to call it. Um, hopefully it'll help. Anyway, talk to you next time.